My name's Andy. Welcome to episode 85 of Keeping Water. I'm going to start this week's episode by talking about a bit of a disaster, really, that happened a couple of weeks ago now. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a picture that I posted that kind of mentioned it. And what it is, is about an external hard drive that I keep or kept a lot of my videos on. So basically what I do on my main computer, which is running out of space, I keep maybe the previous 15 or so videos and all the raw footage that I've shot for them. And then I share the rest, and this is now going back a couple of years, and even video clips from when I first set the pond up before I had YouTube, all the rest go onto an external hard drive, which was, a, I think, a four terabyte hard drive. And I had about two and a half to two and three quarter terabytes of videos on there, as well as photos and templates. So the kind of photo files I use to build up the thumbnails or edited videos that I use to make the introductions or the outros or that sort of thing were all on that hard drive. Now, I really couldn't afford a second four terabyte hard drive to back up the all the footage that I'd saved to that original external hard drive. Anyway, quite suddenly the hard drive stopped working. So I couldn't access any of those files. I took the hard drive out of the case that it came in and bought another caddy to dock that hard drive into. And again, none of it was um, accessible. So I had a look online for services that can find and retrieve your files from non-functioning hard drives. And surprise, surprise, they can do it or potentially can do it, but it costs hundreds of pounds, literally hundreds of pounds, which I can't afford. So basically what I've lost <laughs> is all of my raw footage prior to, I think about November last year, going back to when I first started the pond and all of the footage that I've shot since I started YouTube. Now, it's not a complete disaster because obviously all of the edited complete videos, the ones I put up as clips or episodes, are all there on YouTube. So I've been able to retrieve that from YouTube. But all of the videos that went into that prior to being edited, I've lost completely, which is a bit of a shame, really. <laughs> I can't say that I'm particularly happy about that. So it, it's, you may think, well, is that really important? Now I do a lot of videos and where I show comparison. So what I, for instance, what I wanted to do when I got the new fish is I wanted to show footage of my older car to show what they were like. And I couldn't really find any good footage. I could find some edited footage that I put on Instagram, but that didn't really work that well when I tried to put it into a main 1080p video. So that sort of thing I'm not able to do. So for instance, I want to show the fish feeding in 2020 or 2021. I've got to take footage from one of my edited videos, which means obviously taking out my commentary and also t taking out any text, which obviously I can't do. So. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, really. Um, thinking about it, though, most YouTubers that I follow, certainly who've been around for, you know, quite a long time, have all tended to lose footage at one time or another. So I'm kind of I'm kind of kind of annoyed by that. And it will impact some of my video making going forward. But I think I've kind of got away with it for now. I've remade all the thumbnail templates and some of the video templates. There was a bit of a problem with the introduction to my videos, which I know isn't very user-friendly anyway, and it's a bit long, but I managed to cobble that together and keep making that, because obviously a lot of the files that I used that go, went into that were lost as well. So yeah, bit of a sad time really. I may in the future try and find someone who can retrieve the videos off that. I've still got the hard drive. I haven't thrown it away in anger or anything but um, for now they're all lost. Now another more pond related problem I had this week is I went into the filter shed and I noticed that the water wasn't flowing through the tempest. And then when I went back outside, I noticed that water wasn't flowing out of the outlets into the pond particularly quickly either. So my first thought was, is there a blockage somewhere? And I checked the, the main filters and they seemed fine. It seemed to be all flowing through, albeit quite slowly. And then I had a look at the pump in the pond and it was absolutely covered in detritus and bits of dead plants, which I'm guessing 
was from when I cut the plant back a few weeks ago. So I tried first of all because I didn't really fancy getting in the pond. I had a bit of a bad back last week and I was quite busy with work so I didn't really fancy getting in the pond. So I tried to get the pump out of the pond using a bit of a grabber stick but that didn't really work. I couldn't really get it so I had to get in the pond. Now usually when I get in the pond if I'm going to be in the pond for any length of time I put waders on but underneath the waders I put a wetsuit and that's just really for added warmth really not to keep out water because the waders do that but I did this in a bit of a brush and as I said I had a bit of a bad back and so I didn't put the wetsuit on and the difference getting in the pond was quite considerable really the water was about I think I think about six degrees that day um, but it was really cold it was so cold that I actually had my iPhone in my pocket of my jeans that I had on underneath my um, waders and it was so cold that the um, audiobook I was playing um, started breaking up. So the iPhone didn't appreciate it. It wasn't water getting in, it was just the cold. Anyway, I retrieved the pump from the pond and cleaned it, got rid of all the um, dead plants and things like that. And everything worked perfectly afterwards. So it was a bit of a pain. I didn't film it just because I did it in a bit of a rush in a break from work and uh, I just didn't have time really to get it get set up a camera and things like that but yeah that all resolved and everything flowed through the filters properly right just before I start the main part of this video just a, a heads up for next week really there may not be a video next week and if it's not next week then it probably be the week after that I don't have a video out um, mainly just because of time I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have time to get things done so yeah as I said it'll be either no video next week or no video the week after right so on to this week's video which is a little bit of underwater filming and above water filming just to show how the new carp are settling in and as well as showing how the older carp are definitely waking up from winter Right, so this first video is some um, film underwater. What I was looking for really is to see whether the newer carp were feeding. I think I'd spotted them picking up a couple of sinking pellets the day after I think they were in the pond. But since then I hadn't really seen them and there was some footage I showed last week that they were coming up to the surface with the older carp but they weren't necessarily feeding. Now I put in some sinking pellets not very many sort of half a handful really and the older carp and the rud showed an interest um, but as you can see it took a while really for the newer carp to come over now this clip really is is a little while after the pellets have all been eaten by the older carp really um, they, as I said, there wasn't very many and they picked them up really quickly. By the time one of the newer cup, as you can see here, came over, they were all gone. But they, although they did come over here and follow the older cup, they didn't really investigate the bottom very much to pick around, as you can see the older cup doing, and see what was on the bottom and investigate and find some food. So they came over and visited this area, which is where I fed. But as I say, they didn't really look for food that much. Even as you can see the tench, which tends to be the fish that wakes up slowest from winter and starts feeding, um, came over and had a look. Didn't really pick at anything, but was definitely showing an interest in what was going on anyway. The, the mirror carp, the older mirror carp, unsurprisingly, is was the first over and as you can see it's still picking away at the bottom hoping there's some more food um, the two older carps appetite is is definitely quite high at the moment even though the water temperature is only between sort of six and eight degrees really um, that little rise from sort of five and below has meant they've that they're definitely wanting food i'm not really feeding that much as I say, I'm feeding a relatively small amount and um, I'm not feeding every day by any means. The common, as, as I said last week, definitely picked up appetite wise um, since 2020 and it was showing as much interest. And as you can see again, the newer fish are still just kind of swimming around with the older fish without really showing an interest in food. 
Now, as I spoke about last week, I'm not sure if that's just because they've still not properly settled into the pond or whether it's because they're not recognising what I'm feeding as food particularly. It might be a combination of the two, really. They they look pretty relaxed and pretty happy. I mean, their fins are all up. Um, there's no signs of ill health. They've still got those abrasions and they've still got what looks like a reasonable amount of carp pox on their tail and their side. But they look fairly happy in their environment. Otherwise, no real signs of stress, aside from the fact that they're not really feeding that much. Again, I threw these the, the pellets in about half an hour before the bits of video you're seeing now. And the older carp are still at it looking for food in this area. So they really are quite hungry coming out of winter, I think. And the, the two newer mirrors are again following them up onto this part of the pond. But so far, not really poking around and looking for food, really. They're just kind of hanging out with the other carp. And as you can see, I think in this next clip, yeah, one of the mirrors is actually starting to peck around for food. Now that bit behind the disc is where detritus does settle. Um, so there's probably lots that they're investigating and smells and things like that. There's not usually any food there, even though the carp do seem to investigate that area of the pond quite a lot for food. But yeah, the 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 mirror the newer mirror finally did have a look for some food although it was really too late to the party really um all the food had been picked up long before it, it started to investigate and start to take some items in and see if they were actually food items that they would get any nutrition from yeah and it's very much tail up now so there's obviously something over there that it's it's investigating and is thinking might be edible, but I think it's probably mistaken. And again, now it moves out into the bit, and this is actually where the pellets landed here. Now, I'm, I don't think it's probably still smelling any, any scent from those pellets, but it's having a good look around here. As you can see, the, the rudder are also pretty hungry and looking for food. And they, they kept coming back to this area after I'd thrown the pellets in. Now, again, it's still this one, one of the newer carp, actually. The linear didn't do this at all, I don't think, throughout the whole time I fed. Uh, sorry, I filmed, which was about two hours, really, from when I put the pellets in, I was filming. And the older carp definitely hung around and knew with a vain hope that I'd put some more food in, which, which I didn't. And this one newer carp, joined the act really but um it was as i said it was too late for food yeah still no sign of the other linear really it's not really joining in at all the tench has come back up to have a look um, whether that's just because it wanted to be near some bigger fish as it's still feeling cold, whether it's actively looking for food, I'm not quite sure. Although one of the later clips might give you a bit of a clue. Now, this is actually the start of the mysterious disappearing fish. And one of the things that I couldn't quite work out, even after I'd seen that crucian carp, is where it was actually hiding. And as you can see in this clip, it finally reveals where it has been hiding in those pretty awful folds in that rear corner. And that seems to be its home, really. Um, not where I thought it was hiding, that's for sure. And here's a little bit of a close up and it emerges from under that great big ugly fold. Um, it looks in pretty good health, to be honest. Um, most of the Crucians last summer when they arrived, they had a few abrasions and a few knocks, a bit like the carp I've got now. It seemed really healed up and well. I'm not sure if it's a particularly particularly fair to keep it in the pond on its own though with no other crucians. I don't think it's particularly good behaviour to be witnessing that it's so stressed it hides in the folds most of the time really unless I get in the pond and stir it out. So I am considering netting it and moving it on with the other crucians really. Right, so this is a few days later, 
and I'm throwing in some floating pellets. Now, again, the, the newer carp last time came up quite interestedly in the floating pellets, but didn't take any. The pellets I'm throwing in, probably a bit too many actually, are six mil and 11 mil pellets. Now it's interesting that you might have seen in that top left corner of what fish actually came up first. And the first fish to come up, as I show in this close up, was actually the tench. Um, now it comes up in a particularly um, consistent stereotype way as it comes up very slowly, then makes a kind of panicky grab for a pellet. And then whether it gets it or not, it kind of flips and then swims back down again. So as you can see, again, the older carp were straight up for these pellets, really. They were very, very comfortable um, feeding off the surface when I was around. So no problems with that as long as I kept nice and still. Um, I have actually got the camera on a tripod, but I'm stood next to it. Now, again, the, new, the newer carp are up and they're right up next to the older carp and watching them feed. I think they may be look at getting some algae off the side of the pond there but they're not really looking at the pellets that much or making a go for them. Now some of the pellets hide or get stuck rather underneath these plants and certainly the um, older carp know that and will often go and peck around under the leaves and get any pellets that get stuck there. Yeah and as you can see new mirror carp right up with the older carp but again still not feeding. But as I said, from the view of them underwater and how their fins were up and they looked quite relaxed and didn't look stressed. Again, the way they're swimming around, as you can, they're just going out of shot there. But the way they're swimming around, and that's the tench again, um, they look pretty relaxed. They don't look like stressed fish. Right, so I threw in some two mil, mil pellets that I feed the rud. And the rud had a few and... I kind of left them to it then I went back out and I noticed all the carp were up feeding off the two mil pellets. Now normally they don't get a look in because when the rudd are really hungry they're faster and because they're small pellets they get to them first. But what I noticed is the newer carp were feeding off the two mil pellets. Now again this is a, a few days after the previous clip of, them feed, of the larger carp feeding off the surface. So this is about 10 days after they were in the pond but they're definitely up and feeding off these two mil pellets quite in quite a relaxed way really because I'm stood relatively close to the pond at this point and moving closer and yeah the both the new carp came up and were feeding off these smaller pellets now I can't remember who it was but someone advised me that even for big carp in a pond small pellets are actually better so I do apologize who suggested that to me but certainly with these newer carp that they definitely sparked a response and they came up and fed really well off these two mil pellets now i think i was recommended it because of because of waste because the reason i, f I often feed 11 mil pellets is when my fish were really nervous and not coming up to the surface it meant they could come up really quickly and get quite a lot of food for a short amount of time at the surface um, but actually in many ways smaller pellets are better so this is definitely evidence that really small pellets work because these these smaller carp definitely like the two mil pellets and are definitely up and feeding the bigger carp are basically eating anything at the moment they're really hungry and um, i don't know if you can see there's you can see the two mil pellets floating on the surface they look just like detritus really because they're that tiny the rud as i said they cleared out about half of what i threw in and then the the larger larger fish picked off the the rest now the tench doesn't come up for these small pellets at all and it tends to pick out the 11 mil pellets when i throw the other larger pellets in it really really does like them for some reason like i guess because it can come up and get quite a lot of food in one go um, and it prefers that but yeah this is I, I quite like this shot maybe i'm i'm biased but i quite like seeing all the carp up and feeding at the surface even if it is for you know just the small pellets so yeah that was it i'm really happy the fish have seem settled in and they're actually all finally feeding off the surface it will be interesting in the next few weeks whether they they take larger pellets right i hope you enjoyed that video 
thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked it, please like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, with just the slight caveat that next week, as I said earlier, there may not be a video, or if not next week, then probably definitely the week after there'll be no video. Um, and as I said, that's just time really, probably gonna run out of time. But yeah, I really do appreciate you watching the video. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.